and welcome to our 10 years anniversary video series. In case you have no clue who we are, I am Andrea. And I am Jens. This is the first out of 11 short little videos we are going to make because of our 10 year anniversary of working on our L. Jolson documentary. Since this is the first video, we are going to start talking about the year 2006 when our work as documentary filmmakers uh, really began. We did a couple of things before that, before we started to work on our Al Josen uh, documentary, but more like local stuff, which helped us to, you know, try things out and everything, but nothing really professional. <laughs> okay. Not good. Hey, how up? I need to push you out of bed. I remember that uh, back in 2005 when we did some uh, other things, I, I was kind of annoyed. <laughs> I remember that back in 2005 when we did some, some, uh, some other things, I was kind of looking for some story or something you know, to be passionate about and then came Al Jolson. We attended a lecture on film history at the University of Hamburg where the professor, a famous media scholar, mentioned the jazz singer just briefly in passing. I recall that he said that the jazz singer isn't really the first true talkie, but it is called the first talkie due to its massive popularity. We didn't know anything about the movie and he didn't, he didn't tell us more, so we tried to find out something. Yeah, I, I think he didn't even mention Al Jolson and he wasn't really advertising the film at all, but we were thinking, okay, this, if this film was so successful, we thought or asked ourselves why. So we uh, got the film, a very bad uh, pirate copy, which we didn't know at the time. It uh, was not easy to get. Uh, we watched it and I remember the day, it was December 23rd, 2005, and I remember that very well because it ruined Christmas for me, because from that day on, it was the jazz singer and L. Jolson ever since. I mean, for days and weeks and months and now years, 10 years, uh, L. Jolson. From today's perspective it's hard to explain why and even back then I, I couldn't really tell why or what really got us hooked on, on Jolson but I remember the first moment in the film when he was when he was saying to to Tootsie goodbye at coffee dance where I felt like wow that's that's impressive this must be must have been some quite some entertainer and since we've never heard of Jolson I was asking myself was he was he famous was he huge at the time because he seemed to be so modern or even timeless although that was a very bad copy this came through with this charisma and this personality and it was just something about him where I said wow this is incredible I've never seen anything like that and then when the scene uh, was uh, with um, his mother, when he started to talk to his mother in the blue sky scene at the piano, that was it. We paused there. Something we've never seen before. I'm someone so brings so much, you know, of his personality across. Although it was such a, an old film and in a bad version, bad sound, bad, bad, you know, picture and everything, black and white and all things, but it seemed so, yeah, modern or or timeless. And also the uh, topic. I mean, the fact that this was, you know, we're Germans. This was a film where there is a criticism of, of Jewish traditions, I mean, very conservative, old traditions. Um, I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, the only criticism we ever came across, you know, of, of anything Jewish was, of course, coming from Germans, you know, the Holocaust and films from the Nazi era and all that stuff. So that was completely new. It was before the Nazi era. and set on a completely different continent, never seen anything like that, that Jews criticize Jews, you know, some this conf yeah, conflict of different generations, that was uh, interesting too, but overall it was definitely Jolson. And I remember when we paused the film there, this blue sky scene, uh, we started a Google search. I needed to know, was that guy famous at the time? Which is <laughs> today of course ridiculous, because yes, he was the world's greatest entertainer, but at the time I had never heard of him, so how can that be? And we found out he made several films, thankfully. And the most important thing we found out was there was an organization called the International Jolson Society, which still remembers Al Jolson to this very day, and on top of that, organizes Jolson festivals every year. 
several actually, but this was the big one always taking place in May. And we went to the website and found out the next festival would be in May 2006. And we decided, okay, we book the damn flights, although I have to say, you know, it sounds trivial, but I don't fly, usually. I have a very fundamental fear of flying, and I flew before, it's not just, you know, abstract or anything, it's, you know, I have my reasons. But the minute I found out there will be a festival in May of 2006 in Philadelphia, we have to be there, it's just, it just has to be done. We attended the first festival, we connected with lots and lots of people who were all very nice, very supportive very enthusiastic about our endeavors. We do some some interviews and we use it for class. Little did we know at that time that this was the start, <laughs> the very start of a project that's still ongoing 10 years later. But after the first trip, after we met so many people at the Joseph Festival in 2006, it was pretty clear to us that this will be bigger than we thought. A nice little anecdote. Um, from 2006, uh, at least for us when we were there, it was incredible and I think it was really what pushed us forward because it was some sort of sign at the time that we are doing the right thing and this is going to be important and we have to you know keep going and this is going to be successful is when it was two days before we were heading back home to Germany and I read an interview in a book uh, of a Korean war veteran who had actually seen Jolson and he was, you know, in this interview he was talking about uh, Jolson, how he met him and there was a photograph in it uh, with him and Jolson and his name was Jim Downs. So the name was listed, probably James Downs, but Jim's, you know, nickname or something and that he lived in the state of New York. So that's all we knew and I had this crazy idea of trying to find this man. We are calling the uh, phone director and they gave us a list of all Jim James Downs in the whole state of New York. It was a very long list and we called pretty much each and every one of them. So and I remember you started to call and it was ridiculous. We had lots of young guys on the phone who thought what the hell, some hung up on us, some were thinking okay good luck but that's weird. Who's Jolson? Most of them had no clue what we were talking about. And I remember the first one, like number 10, 11, 12 or something, who said, that, yeah, I am a veteran, you know, he sounded old, we were hopeful. And when we asked him, okay, from the Korean War, oh yes. Oh, that was, I remember that, I thought, oh God, that was... But when we asked him, did you see Jolson perform? No. He knew who Jolson was, I remember that, but he had not seen him, so okay, well. And I remember you wanted to give up on that, and this is ridiculous, which it pretty much was. I mean, if you now think about it, I think... 20, 20, with something between 20, 25, number 20, 25. That's when we had uh, an older gentleman on the phone who said, yeah, I'm a Korean War veteran. And when you asked him, did you see L. Jolson perform? He said, yes. And I've read that a Mr. James Downs has seen, has seen L. Jolson, the entertainer L. Jolson in the Korean War. You met him. My heart stopped beating, I remember that so much. It was incredible. He was uh, very surprised that we called and a little bit reluctant because, you know, he was thinking, who the hell are you, you know? And we only had two days left, so we asked him if he could meet us the next, very next day. So he was thinking, like, oh, okay, but he finally agreed and he lived in Ogdensburg, New York, which is, you know, at the very top, at the north, you know, the, the, what, what is this river called, uh, to the Canadian border, St. Lawrence River? Yeah. yeah. That's where he lived. So we hopped in our rental car and drove all the way up there. And the result was a wonderful, wonderful interview very, with a very sweet man, very emotional interview. He had a very, very good memory of it. Oh, and on the phone, he mentioned the picture. He, he mentioned a photograph of him and Joseph. I thought, okay, that's the guy because I saw this day with the photograph before. So he was uh, very sweet. It's a great interview we made. Oh, he whistled in a special way, put his hands up to his mouth like that. and move his hand like this. I never saw a person whistle that way, but he did, he did that in Korea too. So that's when I thought, okay, it's it's worth the effort. As ridiculous as you know, it might sound, but or everything is pretty much what we're doing. It's, it's worth it. It's leaning somewhere. Later, like a few months later, I found out that um, this guy was not only connected to people from the Jolson Society, but he told us himself but he uh, was actually a member of the Jolson Society, so we could have simply, you know, asked someone from the society they knew about him, but we, at the time we weren't really connected to lots of people from the society, so 
we didn't know, but it would have been a lot easier a little later to find him. But well, this is a great story, so <laughs> that's how it is. We thought at the time this was the only trip, maybe we make a second one next year, but there was a, some spontaneous, for us at least, spontaneous thing coming up, event coming up, the El Jolson Way on Broadway was opened in August of 2006 and I don't remember why but maybe I needed more to you know relax from the first trip but you went over there all by yourself but it was also a very successful trip. Not only did I film the Al Jolson Way inauguration which is in New York City right in the heart of the theater district I think it's a 51st Street and Broadway which is now called a Jolson Way you can still see the sign up there. Um, it was a quite a hot day, I mean August in Manhattan. Um, and Andrea had the idea that I should ask some people just in the streets if they know the name Al Jolson, if they know Jolson. And I asked quite a lot. I had my camera there, my microphone there, and I just asked, hey, do you know Al Jolson? Most of them, I'm afraid to say, had no clue. But there were some, and it's on tape, who even could sing some Jolson songs like Mammy. Mammy, yes. how I love you, how I love you, my old man. And some really, you know, had knowledge about him. I believe it was 1920s, 1910s, so I can't forget the date, um, Blackface, Mama. And there was also a very nice gentleman by the name of Pat Profito. Uh, who is a TV producer. He worked at that time for a public television channel in New York City and he gave me his business card and said, well, you're doing great stuff, why don't you, well, don't you both, come over to our show. He invited us, that was great, it just happened on the street there in the blazing August sun and yes, we attended that talk show. Next year, yeah. The next I, I remember when you called me <laughs> I remember exactly where I was sitting in my old studio flat uh, when you gave a report of what was going on in the day and you told me, yeah, you know, a television producer came to me on Broadway and asked us if we want to be on a television, a live television Doesn't talk that show. sound great? That and sounds thought, yeah, so wonderful. Yeah, right. That's just, um, you know, America. I didn't lie. America, you know, <laughs> lots of talking, but this is so ridiculous, you know, the, the, he probably wanted to say something nice, but this will never, he will never follow through. It was so ridiculous. But then, really, a few months later, we appeared on that talk show. It's, it's, it worked. Yeah, it, it did work. Incredible. Incredible. That happened in 2007. Right. And the actual, yeah, the interview, yeah. And that will be next video. the topic next. for our next video. So, thank you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, and see you in the next video for more on the year 2007.